Hey everyone, uh, this is lecture number six for week number six. Uh, this week uh, we we'll talk about stakes. Uh, also, uh, you have a number of tasks, although no more than usual. The reading for this week is Ready Player One by Ernst Klein. Uh, the entire book is what you're supposed to read, so hopefully you started already, otherwise uh, you'll have a, a good bit of reading to do. A, a separate writing assignment is going to be a writing reflection, and I'll talk about that a little bit. It's not something you're going to turn in, uh, so don't worry about that. The post this week, uh, I'm asking you what's at stake for you in Ernst Klein's novel. Uh, does it? What kind of so what question is the answer for you? Uh, you have your usual participation amount of 500 words or more for discussion uh, by Sunday at 10. And then uh, there's an optional sign up for a paper debrief session. I know I didn't get to talk to everybody uh, last week while they were writing their uh, between their first and their second drafts of their papers. So I wanted to give folks an opportunity to debrief about their paper. And so uh, I'm asking you to please sign up by Wednesday. Uh, just, again, send me an email and uh, tell me what day and what time you want to chat. And we can talk about uh, how your paper went and, and walk through the feedback on your second draft. There will be a, another opportunity for a uh, online uh, real-time conference for the second paper. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone got a chance to talk with me about uh, this one, the comparison paper. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to last week, or if, even if you did, if you want to talk about how things went, uh, just send me an email and tell me when you want to, uh, to talk about that. Uh, finally, uh, next week uh, we're playing uh, Gone Home, and that's going to be our last text for the course. Uh, hopefully uh, you got my message about Gone Home being on sale. Uh, it may also be on sale uh, this week. It's the, it's the Steam Summer Sale right now. So there are a bunch of games on sale. They change the sales every day. It, it probably has some percentage of the price off this week, too, if you didn't happen to get it earlier. Uh, but that's next week's uh, text, uh, Gone Home. So the writing reflection. This is something I, I typically ask uh, composition students to do uh, after they finish a large paper. Uh, take a minute to think about how things went and how you want to improve in the future. So there are really only three questions to this. Uh, what part of the paper are you most proud of? Or what, what aspect of the paper are you pleased with? Uh, second, what could have used more work? If you had all the time in the world, what would you have gone back to work on? And then what do you plan to improve for next time? What is your focus going to be next time? So what I'd like you to do, uh, again, this is not going to be something that you turn in. So this is just for you and your no, notes to yourself on how to improve. So I've got these questions for you up on Google Docs. Uh, so if you go there, you'll be able to cut and paste these questions into a new document in your favorite word processor. Uh, and just take a couple sentences and respond to each of them uh, in time. Again, this is just for you. This is a way to improve and a way to think about and be conscious of your writing practice. If you don't do it, I won't know, but I'm telling you it, it will be helpful. And then when we get to the next paper, the critical paper, uh, I'll ask you to go back and look at what you wrote. Uh, and so hopefully it'll help you focus and guide and, and be a little bit more purposeful with your writing. All right, stakes. So this is the focus of our writing instruction for this week. Uh, the stakes are the answers to the so what question. Uh, essentially, they're what's at risk in any text. And this is going to be both the primary text that you're reading the secondary criticism about that text, your response to it, all those types of things, all of them have some sort of answer to the so what question. Uh, you may even see me write occasionally on your own papers, uh, so what in the margins, where it's not evident what's at stake and or how your comments are responding to something that's at stake. So stakes tend to have different circles of relevance and these often overlap or intersect, or you can find elements that, that trace across multiple uh, levels here. The first one, and the most obvious one, is, is the author. So when the author is writing this text, what's at stake for them, or what's at risk for them? Uh, so, for example, when you are writing a paper for this class, one of the things that's at stake for you is a grade. Uh, for an author of a novel, it, it may be... Uh, it's financial security, that's one thing, but it might also be something personal. They're writing to process 
uh, some aspect of culture that they're engaged with. Uh, this usually when people are when uh, secondary criticism is dealing with what's at stake for an author, you're talking about some kind of uh, biographical issue. How that's bound up in the text. Second one here is the the textual thing. So basically, what's at stake for the text itself? Often this is going to be uh, some kind of uh, formal compositional issue. When um, you're if you're uh, reading something like Sense and Sensibility, uh, who Eleanor marries uh, has various stakes for how the plot plays out, uh, things like that. So uh, where and some a uh, plot event or some use of language has is somehow important or meaningful within the structure of the the text that you're reading. The stakes for an audience. This is why it's meaningful to you as a reader. Uh, often this is something personal. So maybe you just really like Fight Club, and so it's. Uh, the type of irreverent language in it is it has stakes for you or something you identify with. This this can be anything that, that the reader finds personal. It, it finds personally meaningful or is a so what for them or why they find it important. Uh, the final circle of relevance here is a social cultural. So basically why is this meaningful in a larger sense outside of uh, the principal actors involved in the, the exchange of the reading, right? So you have the author who makes the text that's then read by the audience, but then there are larger issues involved outside of that sort of that uh, uh, triangulation, right? So these can be historical. So a text can be meaningful because it was the first to have done something, or uh, it had a particular influence uh, at the time it was written, uh, or it may be particularly useful now. So, for example. Uh, Ayn Rand's books have become relevant again, uh, particularly because uh, they espouse a kind of uh, a, a kind of philosophy that's uh, very attractive to a freelance uh, to a uh, laissez-faire capitalism that's that's popular these days. But it, so it would have had stakes when it first came out for its own historical context, and now has new stakes in the present context. So historical. Uh, a text may have philosophical stakes. Uh, it may be addressing large philosophical questions about the nature of life and reality and uh, things like that. Uh, you may think of something like Candide, if you've ever read Candide, which is which is a, a very clearly philosophical novel. Uh, it may have political stakes. You might think about, uh, if you've ever taken a class from uh, Dr. Seb uh, Sebastian about uh where he talks about Dante's Inferno or the Canterbury Tales, where uh, the writing has very clear uh, political investments, or you know something that um, maybe a class from Dr. Murphy talking about uh, modern slave narratives and uh, the kind of political stakes that are bound up in these uh, first-person testimonials, and of course it could have aesthetic stakes. Uh, this is where uh, you'd be talking about the you know, value of stream of consciousness to modernism or uh, the significance of uh, in cold blood as a, a non-fiction novel and these kinds of these kinds of aesthetic stakes usually answer some kind of historical significance in terms of uh, the, its meaning as art right so again when, when you're looking at all of these circles you want to be looking for stakes that cut across multiple levels here. So, if you're talking about just why was it why is something meaningful to an author, that may only be interesting or useful if you're doing a type of bio biographical project. It becomes more interesting when you start thinking about how that authorial uh, significance plays into a kind of textual formation or, or the formal elements of the text, or how that then ties into a larger social or cultural issue. One of the hard things, or one of the things that, that is necessary to sort of learn as you're transitioning from, into a, a, when you're transitioning into a, a college level uh, writing or professional writing, uh, is that the things that you find particularly meaningful and important uh, aren't necessarily interesting in a larger sense, aren't necessarily valuable in a larger sense. And so, it, for example, uh, if you find 
uh, Fight Club particularly cool or something like that, uh, that may only be interesting to other people you know. Uh, it may not have larger stakes beyond that. Or whether or not you get a good grade on your analysis of uh, Ready Player One, it's really only meaningful to you and maybe your family, or, or it is a pretty small circle of meaning, a circle of relevance. And so the goal or what you really want to be doing is trying to find something that you're interested in and you're personally invested in, something that has stakes for you and the types of intellectual questions that, that really drive your inquiry. And then be able to tie that kind of personal investment into some larger uh, questions that, that are getting into usually this kind of social, uh, social historical, cultural uh, range. And so often what we're doing in uh, literature classes is, is going from some type of formal textual observation uh, to a kind of social cultural uh, level of social or cultural stakes uh, that we find interesting or, or important or valuable. So you want to think these, of these things kind of overlapping, these stakes as, as overlapping circles of relevance or importance. Uh, when you're doing your close readings, when you're finding your observations, we've done a lot of work uh, to generate observations are kind of brainstorming, uh, our mind mapping. Those are really generative, uh, uh, generative activities uh, where you're free writing and just letting ideas come through. And then what do you do with all these ideas? Uh, you have to take them and shape them from just a simple observation of, oh, isn't it neat that this happened to uh, become relevant to these larger questions uh, and, and issues of stakes. So as we move on to the stakes in Ready Player One, which is our task for this week, uh, what I want you to I want you to ignore authorial stakes for right now. There's a certain kind of scholarship that will be invested in why the author does such and such, or why some, something might be meaningful for the author, or how certain events in their lives influence what they made. Uh, that's not the kind of scholarship we're, we're focusing on right now. It requires a kind of research we're not going to do. Uh, so your goal is ready to move from the level of observation. Uh, that's a practice that we've been working on so far. So now that we kind of have this down where you're observing things about the text, structure, characterization, and so on, and they'll be able to move to the next level and why it's particularly interesting uh, that characters are formed the way they are, why the particular arrangement of language or the imagery that's being used is here, uh, how it ties the kind of textual stakes or these these textual moments to uh, the social cultural sphere. And again, it should be driven by your interests, the things that, that have stakes for you. So just looking through the first section of uh, Ready Player One, the, the very first area, 000, uh, 0000, 000 uh, you're going to notice a number of things, uh, larger social cultural issues. Uh, that are uh, significant themes or structuring themes in uh, in just this first section. Uh, number one of them is going to be class. For example, uh, you have uh, Wade as the poor kid from the stacks uh, engaging in holidays game. You have uh, questions of high versus low culture, uh, with all of the pop culture references that are going around. Uh, the kind of uh, seeming ubiquitous influence of uh, the pop culture references, particularly from the 80s. Uh, <clears throat> so the significance and influence of mass media, uh, where uh, you have Hall Hall Halliday uh, composing his uh, video will uh, using snippets from 80s culture. Obviously, if we're dealing with the virtual reality situation, there's going to be questions of real versus virtual here. Uh, <clears throat> what's the influence of the virtual world on the real world and vice versa. Uh, there's going to be a question about the relationship to other literatures. Uh, so what is the aesthetic significance of uh, this book in relation to other ones, for example, like Neuromancer and Snow Crash? Probably, unless you know uh, the genre of sci-fi and, and cyberpunk and the kind of things that this novel's in conversation with, you probably want to leave that one alone too. Again, that's the kind of stakes that you'll get into once you you build a kind of body of knowledge and you're you're aware of uh, uh, a tradition, but not not something you really need to worry about now. And there are any number of others that are going to emerge over the course of the novel. That, for example, uh, gender is certainly going to be an issue. It's almost always an issue in, in novels. 
uh, and, and any, many other kinds of things, technology and culture and so on. So the key here is to find something that stands out to you. What is it that, that really strikes you or you find interesting? And then ask yourself why you think it is important, why you think it is standing out. What kind of social cultural issues is it in conversation with? Or what's the so, so in other words, what's the answer to the so what question? So your pose for this week is to answer the question, what's at stake for you in Klein's novel? Again, we're not looking for like what is the meaning of the book or anything like that. Just when you start reading this book uh, and you're getting into it, and I'm hoping you like it, because this is easier if you like it. <laughs> but uh, as you're getting into it, ask yourself, what is it that's in it for you? What is it that is meaningful? What kinds of issues is it engaging with that you uh, think are uh, significant or, or answer a so what question for you? Uh, so if I was going to ask you, so what about this book, what is it that you would answer? So that's your post for this week. What is your answer to the so what question of, of Klein's novel? So again, your task this week, read all of Ready Player One. Uh, write a post about what's at stake for you in this novel. Make sure you can contribute your 500 words or more discussion by Sunday at 10 p.m. Uh, if you would like to do a paper debrief uh, for your comparison paper, uh, please send me an email by Wednesday. And as always, if you have questions, you can email me or post on their support on uh, Google+. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, let me know if you have any issues or questions, and I will see you in the next video.